now we'll see in detail about the enhancement this is enhancement mode of operation now we are going to look at the operation in detail so previous class we just saw one diagram saying that okay this is how the enhancement mode looks like okay but now what we are going to do right we will start from the point where already the channel has been established because of applying the required amount of gate to source voltage all right let us say that there is a channel which is already been formed i will just copy this diagram though this is a depletion layer when the enhancement mode mosfet is used and you applied a specific amount of the gate to source voltage okay there will be a channel formed which looks like this okay. that now whatever i am plotting here is the enhancement mode mosfet but the right condition is that we applied the required amount of vgs gate to source voltage are you okay so this is how it's going to look like right now i'll say inversion already has been taken place right and so this is connected to ground say zero volts has been connected gate to source so this is the g i'll slightly modify this diagram so that we will understand what are the different voltages that we actually have we have applied okay so i don't need this part so let me erase this so this this i i think i showed that okay what happens when you increase the vgs in a depletion mode mosfet now it is enhancement so you see that uh, we have a voltage that exists between these two terminals okay and i am going to call that voltage as this is the positive terminal this is the negative because it is connected to ground i am going to call this as vgs okay and this voltage is vd or uh, this is also called or you can actually write this is or vds because it's already measured with respect to ground right right vds you are fine with the sign vds right okay so now you see that this region is actually the inversion region where you see that in the inside the p substrate right we have channel built up correct so see this is the channel channel formed right and what is this this n plus is actually this is the diffusion layer this is diffusion this is also diffusion diffusion layer exists during the manufacturing process okay now my point is that in this particular case right when you applied the vgs sufficiently large amount correct and vds is zero right that vds is zero vgs is applied in such a way that channel exists okay so under this condition i can see that right there is a proper channel built but no current because vds is equal to zero this is the first step right we are not going to discuss what we discussed earlier because previously we discussed how to build a channel in an enhancement mode now we know that it is done already okay so corresponding to this diagram we can say right if sufficiently large vgs has been applied right then channel is built between the drain and source okay between the drain and source right due to now you tell the step why due to inversion inversion of 
what of charges right this is the first point next when this completes since v ds drain to source is zero right we observe that there is no current right no current from drain to source okay this is what we have shown in this particular diagram this diagram just tells you about that channel has been built but since vd or vds is equal to zero we are not getting any current right so i just write equal to zero volts so vds is zero volts should be highlighted okay next part right what i'm trying to do now is that i will apply certain amount of vds right what is that amount of vds i'll go to this diagram just to identify that i want to build the circuit and the circuit should work in the first region that is ohmic region ohmic region what is the condition apply a vds such a way that it should be lesser than the gate to source voltage minus the threshold voltage right what was the threshold voltage the voltage above which the channel gets formed correct yes so in the next step i am going to use the same diagram but i'll modify okay so the same diagram let's copy so this is something like okay channel is formed i, I see no current then i come to the second step right and uh, i am going to see that in this particular case right i'll slightly modify the vgs still remains same right so that the channel is built but we'll apply a vds which is non zero okay so we'll modify so here this is the drain terminal and vds is lesser than which value vgs minus v threshold are you okay we apply in this fashion now internally there will be a small change okay what happens is when vds is applied between the drain and the source right i know that as soon as we apply a voltage current starts flowing from drain to the source through the channel right what is that direction i can mark the direction as this so right this is the direction in which the current starts flowing as soon as you apply the vds right now okay under this condition now uh, since we have applied vds lesser than this but vds is greater than zero there is a current flow in this okay but what happens is the resistance of channel as the vds comes into picture there is change in the resistance of the channel okay what do you mean by the resistance of the channel it is something like the width of the channel now you see throughout this is a constant right see this width is constant everywhere it's a constant right the gap between the sio2 layer and the channel's bottom layer is going to be a constant now correct you can see that it's a constant as of now but as soon as you apply this thing as soon as you apply the vds value you can see that there is a difference and the difference is like this i'll just erase this part because this part is not going to come into picture and we'll slightly erase this part okay now you see the the variation i'm going to show in this way so there is slightly increase in the channel over this region okay and this is connected So you see that width has been changed, right? Initially, on the leftmost side, you have the width, and as you move away, the width has been reduced, right? This is what is going to happen now. So I still have the channel. Channel exists, okay? Right? This is the this is the channel which we have marked. Now you see there is a change in the uh, what you call the depletion layer width also because your depletion layer covers your channel, 
a part of the channel is covered by the depletion here right this is because you see i have a bigger voltage here this is somewhat more positive voltage this is negative voltage so when you apply more positive voltage see this becomes more and more reverse biased correct so n region gets more voltage p region is at still at the ground means what it's what's the meaning of that more and more reverse bias correct so what do you mean by more reverse bias more width of the depletion layer layer depletion layer width increases we studied in the diode right but in the reverse bias depletion layer increases size increases that's what i'm showing here see this width is increased compared to this side you understood right so because of this there is a so now if you measure the resistance here you have some resistance lesser here lesser here some other resistance correct so resistance varies like in during the as you move from one point to the other point on the channel that's all that's the basic point when you increase this vds but vds is still less than vgs minus vth okay so this is the second diagram which i want this is still the channel right so now i'll write just the, those points here for your reference okay right so now if vds is increased right right through the channel right this is very clear now now the next point is important right uh, the resistance of the channel varies along this length because of the current into resistance drop of the channel the same word uh, same thing which i am talking in a different way that's all okay the resistance of this channel varies along the length of the channel right and hence we find the varying voltage across across the channel right that's what we call as ir drop current into resistance is a voltage right so depending upon the resistance value you can see the ir drop varies because resistance is different at every point resistance is different so current is same throughout the channel so i into r gives you a different value are you okay yeah so that's what we meant now right uh, at what point you see the maximum voltage right so voltage is maximum at drain or source it should be maximum at source right you can see here this gap is more so i into r is more there you have more resistance so you have more uh, voltage at that at that point correct so during the process if vds is less than vgs minus vdh right right what do you call this the uh, region of operation the region of operation is said to be ohmic it's ohmic region so just go back and check this so this is the region corresponding to what we are talking about so this region are you okay yeah. 
right so current slowly increases as you increase the vds okay yes so already we have plotted the graph you can plot this graph over there when you answer the question all right now we go to the last part where we further increase the vds okay in the sense vds has to be this condition i am just going to check what's going to happen inside the mosfet when i further increase the vds beyond this difference vgs minus vth value right more than that value i give the vds so this is the last mode of operation of a mosfet right so we'll enhance the same thing and write over there okay so this is all right so copy and let's paste okay in this in the same this thing now uh, our situation is that we are going to apply a voltage which is bigger than this so change this vds is bigger than vgs minus vth so what happens now vds further increased means there is much larger depletion layer correct the depletion layers uh, whatever depletion layer we have drawn here right it is further increased the width of that is increased further correct so i have to make changes of only this part okay now you see it is much bigger very very large voltage has been applied so what happens is uh, this particular layer this is not going to be here this is going to touch the about this thing there will be this is going to touch right this will touch here that's the first point and the this is so what we draw here will come and touch the somewhere here okay so it's going to touch something like this now you see that the channel is very thin at this region sorry yeah it will not stop it will be a constant value after this right this is something like very thin layer okay no since the voltage is very high it has more attraction correct more voltage means more attraction for electrons electrons will still come through this right so electrons will come from this to this right because bigger voltage is there but the amount of current flow like like you have a tap assume that you have a tap and uh, using the tap you are controlling the flow of say water right when the when the tap at, is at its maximum voltage uh, sorry maximum position you see the number the amount of water that flows is fixed irrespective of what happens right how much ever water you may have in your tank doesn't matter correct until that point you can increase the tap right you can keep rotating the tap water flow will keeps on increasing but at a maximum position right after that yeah there is no no effect correct no effect of the tap on the flow of current under that condition isn't it so that itself is the condition what we are discussing now that is what is called as a pinch off we'll define that word now okay it is called as pinch off so we have this uh, i'll come to that I'll, I'll give a definition i'll write that as well okay so this part is uh, change the color so that it is visible so this region is called as pinch off all right right so there is a diffusion everything i think the diagram we already have written that now let me write this point so if vds is increased 
further or beyond the VGS minus VT, right? The whole length of the channel, right, will have, now you see here, a uh, certain length of the channel will have the same amount of voltage throughout because, right, this region, uh, I find out that near the drain, there is insufficient electric field to give rise to a properly defined inversion layer, right? So, this condition is what is called as the pinch off condition, all right? Okay, so let's, let's write that. If the VDS is greater than the VGS minus V threshold, the VGS minus VDS, the IR, IR drop or the voltage drop across the channel, right? Uh, will will be something like it's not sufficient to get a properly defined channel, right? also due to due to the lesser electric field right due to the lesser electric field you see that the channel gets P R N C H E D pinched off right so you see that in this particular condition right the diffusion current usually takes the path from source to drain this current causes channels to exhibit a high resistance and behaves like a constant current source so because of this pinched off condition right the channel behaves like a high resistance part so when the current is very high right in a sense it's a constant current constant resistance very high resistance so that even if you apply the variable current variable voltage current will not change at all current will become a constant right so the channel behaves like a high resistance path, hence the current becomes constant, right? Even you change the VDS after this, right? There is no change of current. So, even if VDS is varied, the current IDS is not going to vary, it will not vary, right? So, this region of operation is called as the saturation region of operation of the MOSFET. All right. Now you just go back and see the VI characteristics we have written. So this becomes very clear. Correct. So initially you have the ohmic region where slowly increase the voltage will definitely increase the current. Right. This will increase yeah. like this. But once the pinch off happens, see I actually mark, there is a pinch off happening here, right? As soon as you see the pinch off happening, after that, right, there is, the, the channel is going to behave like a constant, uh, a high resistor, which means, right, you turned off that 
turned on the tap completely after that there is no variation in the width of the channel because of which how much ever you vary the vds in this region i can see that the current is a constant value all right yes so that is how the Now, between the NMOS and PMOS, because that's one common question which arises. If you if you know that, I can skip. First, let. N mods. We can see a general four mark question, right? Uh, right. Some four differences are sufficient to have a comparison of N mods and P mods. Okay. So to start with, I'll write the N mods, right? So as you know, in case of a N mods, right, the electrons are. So, For the uh, see what you mentioned are right, but uh, they are usually they expect something related to uh, what type of applications you use and what's the power dissipation and uh, right related to something like some fabrication process or the noise right we expect something like that definitely you can if if the question comes for more than say six marks you can add the points like you can even write a circuit for a comparison. Okay, you give a positive voltage, you give a lower voltage, etc. Absolutely fine. Okay, so the next point that I want to write here is uh, which is faster? Which if I if I build a same circuit using N MOS transistor and a P MOS transistor, okay, which circuit is going to work faster? Right, that is N. Is it's faster? this point right this is because mobility of electrons is more compared to the mobility of PMOS uh, the holes so electrons move faster compared to the holes so holes move slower that's why PMOS works slowly right absolutely then you have the Exactly what part of circuit you use, right? If you want to make a comparison of that, see the NMOS is actually charge carriers are negative, right? So you try to bring the voltage to a lower side using the NMOS circuit. If you use a NMOS logic in your say in your circuit, right, then you are trying to use it in, right? Used in what you call as pull down okay pull down network what is pull down you are bringing the voltage to a lower level my output is supposed to go to a zero means you will use this circuit okay pull down you are pulling the voltage down to zero at the same time pmos works for pull up pull up networks okay you are trying to pull up to a higher value like 5 volts 
3.3 volts, something like that. If you want to do that, you can do this. All right. And let's go for the next comparison. Uh, uh, this is related to the fabrication process. So NMOS, you use, if you use this, look at the fabrication process of NMOS, this looks pretty much easier. Okay, easier fabrication compared to the PMOS. Okay, so here the process has more steps. So you have more complicated. Okay, fabrication. Okay, then how the noise, signal noises get affected, right? Uh, by this. So here the NMOS, N, NMOS devices have low noise immunity. Its immunity is less, right? They get affected easily by noise, right? Here it is high. Okay. So these are the points addition in addition to whatever you mentioned earlier, right? You, so you can add those points below this to make it a bigger answer. Okay, definitely. All right. So let's move on to the ideal characteristics. So first we'll look at the ideal characteristics, then we'll go for, right? So you, if you check the syllabus, there are two characteristics are required. One is ideal, then we have the DC characteristics, correct? Okay, so we'll go to the ideal now. This is ideal IV characteristics. Okay, so we know that, right? Uh, the whole concept is about controlling the device's current using a voltage that is applied to the gate. Correct. So if we want to look at the, the ideal characteristics of a device, right? We will be starting the whole concept from what is called as a transit time okay so first part is so we'll come to the equations of vi characteristics only after deriving some of the concepts right so the first one is uh, we'll start with the what is called as the transit time so when i say transit time this is normally denoted by tau sd so tau represents the time okay sd is the source to drain how much time will an electron take while it is moving from source to drain are you okay it's okay right so you are okay with the notation tau is the time s for source d for drain so when when we say the current is flowing from drain to source right you see that the electron is actually going to move from source to drain that's why it is to sd not to ds all right uh, let's write so we know that the drain to source current What is the drain to source current that is denoted by ids so ids is equal to right whatever is the charge that is present in the channel i'll write as qc divided by the time required because current is charge per time right the very basic definition of this correct so ids should be drain to source current is actually calculated as the amount of charge present in the channel divided by the time so this time is nothing but the electron transit time. Okay, so here let's call this is equation one, where the QC represents the uh, charge that is induced in the channel, correct? And the tau is what we call as the electron Transit time. Are you fine? No. The how much time is required 
for an electron to cross that channel is nothing but the length of the channel divided by velocity. Are you okay? Right? So, what is the equation for velocity? V is equal to distance by time. Correct? So, if you want to calculate the time, this should be distance by velocity. Right? Take exchange T and V. You get T is equal to D by V. How much is the distance? How much distance the electron covers? It is equal to the length of the channel. Correct? Right? So, now using the same concept, I can write it in this way. Right? So, but the transit time, but the transit time for electrons to from where to where electrons uh, to travel from the s to d is the to s d is equal to let me write it as capital l by v call this is equation number two okay so where what is l let's define this l as the distance between the source and drain that is nothing but the length of the channel are you okay and this v denotes the velocity of electrons in the channel right now what we use we know something else we already know that velocity of electrons are directly given by mobility of electrons into the electric field that is present in any right region so this we already have studied in the electromagnetic field theory correct so but we know something that velocity of the electrons right v is equal to mu into the electric field that exists between the drain and source call this is 3 where mu is called as right the mobility of electrons okay i'm going to write it as a mu n right Later on, you can actually replace this by mu p because mobility of electrons are different than mobility of uh, the holes. Okay, I'll write a mu n. Later on, I'll definitely give the value of mu p as well. Okay, so and the E d s is what? E d s is the electric field, right? Electric field between which two points drain and source okay so once again which is the equation that you use for eds but the eds is equal to electric field is equal to voltage vds divided by the length correct so let me call this as equation number four so l is already known where vds is the right drain to source voltage okay so let me substitute this back so if you put this equation number four in equation number three right so this is four in three gives small v velocity is equal to mobility into eds is equal to vds by l correct this goes into this place are you fine so right this is say equation number five now put this back right in position of tau right so this equation 5 I am going to put in 2. Right? This implies. Next. 
So equation five in two. So you see the equ equation number two is actually to S D is equal to to S D is equal to there is a L divided by V is what now the mu n into V D S by L. So L goes to the top. This is L square divided by square of the length divided by mobility of the electron into the voltage between the drain and the source. Right now you see the transit time is actually inversely proportional to the VDS. Correct? You can see that. So the required equation transit time to S D is equal to L square divided by mu n into VDS. So this is the equation we are going to use even in several problems. Okay, this is important. Now I'll give the values so that you can use those values in the problems. Okay, standard values of mu n and mu p. So when if some question comes on n MOSFET, you are going to use mu n. So mu n value is equal to this is 650 centimeter square per volt second, whereas the mobility of poles will be 240 centimeter square per volt second. So you can see that mu p is smaller. So these are the values of mu n and mu p which we should know. Okay, fine. The next concept under this is what happens, uh, what are the different equations we are supposed to use when the MOSFET is working in non-saturated region, that is actually the ohmic region. Okay, right. This is, uh, let me write as a non-saturated or the ohmic region of MOSFET. So previous topic was common for everything, right? It just depends on VDS. I've see the apply the VDS and calculate the transit time. Okay. Now we are specific. We are going to look at the transistor which is in the ohmic region or the non-saturation region. Right. Now, whenever you are operating the device in the non-saturation region, right? The we are expecting that the IR drop, the drop across the channel is same. We assume, right? Though it is not true, you cannot go ahead and calculate the exact value of voltage at every point. That is not possible. You see here, I have shown that the channel's shape is varying, right? It's tampered from when you move from left to right. But what you do here, right? In this region, you assume that, okay, you calculate a value here, you calculate another value here, take the mean throughout, okay? Take the mean of the whatever voltage you get, you take it as a mean. Throughout the channel, you assume that the voltage is a constant. That is what is the ideal case of the non-saturated or ohmic region. Okay. So, here in the sense in the non-saturated region of operation, uh, here the IR drop, voltage drop, right, in the channel, in the channel is assumed to be same, right, throughout, throughout the channel. Are you okay? And you will be right equal to the average of VDS because you see what is, what is present on one side. What is the right side voltage? This is VDS, right? In the sense here you have the voltage, right? It's like between the drain and source you have a voltage. You take the midpoint as that. So VDS by 2 is what we assume now. Okay, we are assuming that the voltage across the channel, right, is a constant value that is equal to VDS by 2. Okay, the voltage is, right, same throughout the channel with 
value equal to VDS by 2. This is something like average. On one side you have VDS, maybe other side 0 because source is connected to ground. So VDS by 2 is the voltage. Okay. Now, what is the effective gate voltage? Okay, this is also, we are, we are actually in a, in a process of deriving something now. Okay, this is the derivation going on. Okay, so also uh, in the same mode, that is non-saturated region, what is the effective gate voltage? Vg is equal to C. V, what is the voltage you apply to gate? It is Vgs, right? Out of which certain amount of voltage is lost, right? Because that is the threshold voltage, Vgs minus Vdh. Are you okay? Right. So, call this as equation number one. This is the voltage which is available, right? At the gate region between right you apply a vgs to the gate and out of which with vth is lost right where vth represents what is the threshold voltage are you okay this much is the voltage required to bring the channel in place or to to make sure that there is a uh, inversion happening Okay, now during this process, the charge gets induced into the channel due to the gate voltage, right? Are you fine? Yeah. Right, so that's right. During this, in the sense when you apply this particular VG over there, right? During this process, the charges or I can write simply charge, the charge gets induced from where, right? Uh, charge gets induced there, you are collecting the charges from the substrate, that is a P substrate, right? Due to induced, I can write due to the gate voltage that is vg so what we do we try to calculate the charge accumulated per unit area right therefore charge per unit area of right channel if 1 meter square you have inside the channel how much charge right so you know that charge is equal to the epsilon times electric field correct from the basics right so i am using that now so this is charge per unit charge per unit area of the channel is equal to eg into this is the eg is actually the electric field of gate into i'll write the epsilon right uh, relative permittivity i can write ins Okay, insulation, gate insulation layer into epsilon naught. Okay, so let's remember this equation. I'm going to call this is equation number two, where we are supposed to explain the term EG is the gate electric field. Are you okay? Yeah. Then epsilon INS is the relative it's a relative permittivity it's relative permittivity of the gate insulation that's why it is ins written over there then epsilon naught is very standard we know that right that is a permittivity of free space of free space okay now this is for one meter square right this is the charge induced for how much it's for one meter square then what is the 
actual area of the channel it is w into l right so if w is the width of the channel and l is the length okay if this is the case if w is the width of the channel and let's say l is the length of the channel then the total charge accumulated total charge accumulated in area w into l correct this itself is the total charge correct this itself is qc correct q in channel qc is equal to right multiply the previous term by wl for 1 meter square this much is the charge for wl is wl into that number correct so this is eg into epsilon ins into epsilon naught multiplied by wl are you okay so this is what i am going to call as equation number three now let's move on now in my in the next step i am expecting the calculation of eg so but how do you calculate the gate voltage uh, sorry the electric field at the gate it is the potential difference of the gate region divided by the thickness of the gate region okay voltage per distance if you remember the e is equal to v by d right voltage per voltage or voltage drop per distance normal equation so eg is equal to now you see so what is the gate region it's supposed to be vg minus right vds by 2 is the average whole divided by d okay this is the voltage that is available vg minus but i know that vg is what vg is vgs minus v threshold already we have written this right minus vds by 2 this is the numerator whole divided by d correct so where let me call this as equation number i think we wrote till 3 right okay this is equation number 4 on the left hand side i have eg so here where d is the oxide layer thickness are you fine yeah. now let's put this value in the equation of qc so equation number four i am going to use in equation number three okay four in three gives on the left hand side of equation number three i have qc so qc is equal to right we had only eg is being replaced so e other than that, that i have the same thing remaining epsilon ins epsilon naught into wl right now i write this term eg is nothing but vgs minus v threshold minus vds by 2 whole divided by there is a d are you okay yeah. now what is id if you want to calculate the IDS, what is the equation that I am supposed to use? I No, no, no. See, I don't know what is V, I, I don't know what is R. So, I cannot say I into R. Whatever, V into R, sorry. Uh, I is equal to, right? We already have used some equation. IDS is equal to QC by tau, correct? so but we already have done this so where you are using you just see previously we have written I, this equation you can see here ids is equal to qc by tau correct so let's use but i ds is equal to qc by tau fine 
So what's the value of tau? We know the value of tau as well. Correct. So we use uh, this value. Already we know that tau is equal to, in a sense, this is tau SD, right? So tau SD value, we know that. Correct. Can you tell me the value of tau SD? L square divided by mu into BDS. Correct. So substitute. So this is equal to QC value already written. This is epsilon INS into epsilon naught WL by D into this is VGS minus VTH minus VDS divided by 2 whole divided by this is L square divided by mu into VDS. Are you okay? So this is equal to, right? I can write this as, uh, okay, let me write the constant values here. So that is epsilon is a constant, epsilon naught is a constant, mobility is a constant, that is mu n, okay? Mobility is a constant, whole divided by the thickness of the oxide layer is a constant for a given device, okay? Uh, this is into, right? W by L, see there is a L here, there is a L here, it will cancel. So I W is on the numerator, L is in the denominator, into this term, that is VGS minus VTH minus VDS by 2 and this denominator VDS will go over there. So into, this gets multiplied by VDS. Okay, so therefore I'm writing the final answer. IDS is equal to this whole term I'm going to call as a constant. All right, this is a constant K times W by L into this VGS minus VTH into VDS minus this is VDS square divided by 2. Okay, this is the equation for current that is flowing from drain to source in which mode? In non-saturation mode. Okay, so maybe different textbooks will write this in a different way. So, we, you can call this epsilon INS into epsilon naught by D as a oxide layer capacitance, COX, right? So, other format also I'll write here. So, here, here, where the constant K is nothing but mu N, right? Epsilon INS, epsilon naught divided by D. Okay, this is a constant, right? Also, if IDS is also given by, see, there is a mu n mobility of electrons, the C ox, right, into W by L. So, you can compare this with the standard equations, right? This is VGS minus VTH into VDS minus VDS square by 2. So here, this C ox is actually epsilon naught into epsilon insulation layer by D. Are you okay? So you can see it's already, already present in the above equation. See, we separated mu n, the mu n is here. Epsilon into epsilon divided by D is there, right? That is a C ox, right? Into W by L, into W by L and rest of the terms. So, whichever book you are following, right, you may find different ways of representation, right, and uh, may slightly vary. So, I have a third book which actually says that this whole term, right, the, the K into W by L is the beta of the transistor of the MOSFET. So, right, another version, if you call the K into W by L ratio, as beta, then the IDS becomes equal to beta into the whole term, that is VGS minus VTH 
into VDS minus VDS square divided by 2. This is the equation of drain to source current in the uh, ohmic region or non saturated region. Okay, this finishes the complete derivation.